I'll tell you what. I've been pretty pumped for this one. In case you somehow missed the memo, Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 are actually re-releasing as part of a classic collection, and I'm here for it. Now, of course, thank you to Aspire for hooking me up with the review and early access code ahead of launch. I played the crap out of these games back in the day, and now to be able to re-experience them in a singular package is pretty exciting. Now I've already put in a handful of hours to the game, so I've got an understanding of what is to offer here. And I'll go through a lot of that, but I also wanna just show you kind of what the package is. Right now we do have multiplayer available both through LAN and online. However, as of the time of the recording of this video, because the game isn't out, there aren't any players online. So if you try to play multiplayer, you're alone in a server and it's just kind of weird. So there's not much I can do when it comes to like testing that mode. However, with single player in the original Battlefront, you can see we have Galactic Conquest, Galactic Civil War campaign, and the Clone Wars campaign, in addition to Instant Action, where you can just manually select whichever map you want to go to. So say we want to play uh, like Naboo in Theed, we double click that. We want to play during the Clone Wars, and then it adds it to our playlist, and then I can play in order or random order, whatever I want to select, and then just launch right into it. And I don't know about you, but when I see this load screen, I am transported back to my childhood and it's it's kind of mad trippy. I, I, did, I was not expecting to get like the feels from that, but it worked. So right here we go in, we select our spawn point, whatever uh, character we want, and then we're in the game. Just like that. Isn't that crazy? Fast load times. So I'll give it to him. I will say the camera shake is a little more aggressive than I remember, but... It's still quite cinematic, I'll give him that. <laughs> it's like getting punched in the back of the head every time you take a shot. Wow. We can also swap to first person if we want to just go full immersion. Because why not? I am lighter only <laughs> coming right now. Oh god, no cap. Now you'll notice at the top of the video I said re-release, not remake or remaster anything, and that's because this game is not a remake or remaster or anything. It is being pitched as exactly that, a re-release of the original game. And in that capacity, you know, it does what it needs to do. It's playable. It introduces it to a new generation of players. It also allows for larger number of players. So now 64 players are supported in all the multiplayer stuff versus just 32 in like the original Battlefront. And of course it comes with like all the DLC maps and everything. So there's basically bonus maps people might not have ever played which is kind of cool. I will say the graphical options on PC are not super robust, but really this is targeting a lot of players across many different platforms who just want to re-experience these games. This is also releasing on the PS5, Xbox series consoles, and also even PS4 and Xbox One. So no matter what you're playing on, the idea is that you can play these games again. It's also launching on Switch if you're interested in playing it there. And I'll say that the performance has been really, really good so far. And I haven't really seen anything suggesting that there would be any problems with this running on other platforms. So I'm confident that if you play even on Switch, you're probably going to have a pretty good time. I will say I did request other codes as well, but was not able to get one. So I don't know if they run really well. I can only really report on the PC version, which is what I have here. I can say that the game runs very well on the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck if you want to play on the go as well, which is always a really nice thing to see that it actually is optimized well enough that it can be played handheld, which to me is a fantastic way to play this. Like if you just want to play some feel good game while you're trying to go to bed or something, this is a great way to do that. A fantastic way to do it just a feel good game from your childhood right roger roger right dude i don't know what it is but these robots are like a trip down memory lane in and of themselves i remember playing these like big matches and coming and just standing next to them to get healed up and then coming over here to get more ammo and just like chilling and then trying to run off and still beat my brothers who were always better than me at these games. <laughs> so it's a, it's a fun experience to be back. There are occasionally some bugs that I've come across. Like you can see these flaps kind of freak out when you start to try to move around. Not just like in the normal navigational way, but like 
they look like they're glitching they're flicking up and down so much it just doesn't look right you know so that is a problem i've also noticed other issues with vehicles where certain things clearly aren't working properly and um like the camera freaks out and flips upside down and you might clip through the map stuff like that i also love doing the first person view if you want to just go full immersion on it it's great i am a pilot i am a pilot it also always amazes me like how these games look and feel because i remember playing this as a kid and feeling like oh it's a very graphically impressive game it's really really beautiful it looks just like the movies and then you go back and you see the gameplay again when you're older and you're like oh, no! was i stupid as a kid or did our tastes just evolve and change as time went by and obviously like uh the times have changed the standards have risen so now the kind of games that you get in the realm of battlefront are much more graphically impressive but the fact that this game is still fun at this point, 20 years after it released, because this original Battlefront released in 2004, that's a testament to just how important core gameplay design is. It's not really about the graphical fidelity, although that can help and it is important. It's also just about the core mechanics and whether it's fun. This also just really reminds me how amazing it is that EA screwed up the reboots of Battlefront. Like, it was so easy for them to just not make an over monetized pile of crap that's all they had to do and it would have been successful like people wanted more battlefront people were willing to to pay for it and willing to enjoy it but they just could not do it <laughs> it was too hard to just make a good game or even carbon copy these original games just make a copy of them don't even go too crazy just do this again that's all you had to do but they couldn't manage it. It's really funny to me. So anyway, this release allows you to re-experience the original game if you so desire with your friends or solo with the single player campaigns and modes that they have available. It's nothing too crazy, but as far as I can tell, they are relatively polished versions of the games that we all grew up with, know and love. And if you are interested in re-experiencing them on uh, modern hardware, not totally revamped or anything, but just re-experience them, you can do that and it will run, which was not always a, a given, unfortunately, uh, prior to these releases. They were available online, uh, like through Steam and stuff, but your mileage would vary heavily as to whether it would actually run well or at all. But you know what we have to do now, right? Try Battlefront 2. Let's pop into this one. This is the one I spent the most time with, I'll tell you what. It launched in 2005, it looks like. Is that right? Yeah, I just Googled it, 2005. Man, they used to pump these games out so freaking fast, it's crazy. And okay, here we are. We of course have our split screen option, multiplayer option, option options, and single player. If we go in there, we have training space, overview, rise of the empire, galactic conquest, and instant action as well galactic conquest also has four options if you are so interested if you want to do dark reign of the empire you can just pop right in i used to spend so much time playing this mode i'll tell you what like so much freaking time it was outrageous because basically if you're not familiar it's kind of like a a broader like mini space battle sim but you also get to simulate like the individual battles in addition to the space battles it's super super cool and it works really well and as you can see it loads super fast too so if you want to just run around and get crazy you can do that and in this case it's a really simple battle but if we take this and if we win it we take over the planet and then we can move forward and keep working our way through the galaxy which is really simple works great and is just good fun oh god they hurt so bad oh i will say also i should mention this on pc there is an issue that is apparently known by the devs it's in the notes so it might be fixed by launch but there is an issue where sometimes the uh, controller if you're playing on uh, like an xbox controller or something it will disconnect randomly almost like it's running out of battery or dying and then it comes back on after like 10 seconds it's really weird but it is infuriating if you're in like a space battle flying ships around 
and then all of a sudden you can't move and you get shot down because you weren't moving even though it wasn't your fault the controller just kind of disconnected it's really weird might be fixed by the time you see this video but i thought i'd throw it out just in case it is a broader issue playing this also reminds me of just how big every ui element used to be because they needed it to be large enough that you could actually read it on like old really chonky tvs that had like you know 480p resolutions if that so you needed it to be usable even on those old panels and so they had to scale up all of the text and so you end up with playing those games now and it looks super chunky and kind of weird but it's because they need it scaled up otherwise it wouldn't be legible or readable which uh makes sense but it, it's always a way to tell you're playing an older game when all the ui elements are just bloated one of the other things i think that's really cool about just doing a straight re-release as opposed to a remake for the devs is that it kind of frees you of the responsibility or stresses of making certain creative decisions because you can always just point back and be like well that's how it was in the original game so what are you crying about because like if you're upset about spawn points or if you're upset about TTKs or something or this or that it's like well it, it's just it is how it was in the original game so I'm sorry you don't like it but that's just how it was we we're trying to be honest and true to the original source material and you know when you try to reinvent the wheel you have to answer for every design choice of course but when you're just re-releasing something it kind of frees you of that obligation or stress to carefully consider every single little thing and see if you should rebalance something which will inevitably piss off somebody else who really liked that design decision you know it's just it's a small detail but it's one that i'm sure they appreciate we've almost won boys almost won we're super close about to take this point almost only one one left we did it voila I'm so good at this. I also don't know about you guys, but I used to go so hard with the hero mode on Mos Eisley. And this is going to be like a trip through memory lane. I'll tell you what. Heroes or villains? Uh, I'm going to go villains because I used to play as Boba Fett here against my brothers. And it would really drive them crazy because he can do this like jetpack launch thing and just fly away. It was a little busted, a little unbalanced. I'll tell you what, especially when like everybody's doing it because then you can just like zip. <laughs> and wipe them before they even have a chance to know what's going on oh it's pretty good oh those days were simple what is he doing he's just standing he's blocking but this is another great example of like my memory being much more positive i remember this little area that you walk into leading to the like big ship here i remember this looking way cooler when i was little and now i see it and i'm like wow this this is very, very bare bones. I kind of understand why this only took them uh, a year, basically, to put together. <laughs> like, I get it now. But, you know, back in the day, this was AAA. This was, like, the top tier quality. We're pretty spoiled now, I'll tell you what. You know, it's always funny when people are like, why do games take so long to make now? And then you go back and you play these games that they pumped out in, like, a year. And you look at it and you're like, okay, well... I kind of get it like they just made a quick little box and then they they had some like pretty straightforward AI systems that clearly aren't that super smart or anything and sure they focus on just like fun game mechanics and that's it first and foremost but there really is not a lot of complexity here you know it, they're pretty simple games they're really straightforward and that allowed them to get games out a lot faster and maybe that's the lesson to be learned for some of these big devs uh, is that you should just focus on simplicity. You don't need to have 15 different loot box systems in every single game you release. You can kind of lean into stuff that's a little simpler. Another big part of it, of course, is going to be the uh, nostalgia factor, which for me is very, very present. I will readily admit I am nostalgic as crap towards this game. <laughs> oh, can I kill Yoda? Oh, oh, there's so many. Oh, no. They're all here. Oh, no. <laughs> Fly away. See, that used to drive my, my brothers crazy when I would just run away like that with the jetpack. Oh, it drove them crazy. Should we play as Asajj or Count Dooku or the Emperor or... No, Darth Maul. Darth Maul, I remember having a cool jump. Let's see if I remember correctly. He also had this, like, lunging, leaping run that always pissed people off 
and a really good saber throw. Yep, yep, pretty good, pretty good, love it. Let's try it. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, baby. Oh, that's Gucci. Love it. Man, this is making me realize just how much of a waste <laughs> the last like 15 years of Star Wars games have been. I mean, granted, we got like the Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor games, which when they ran were very, very good. However, I'm just stunned that like EA bought exclusive rights to Star Wars for basically a decade and put out two pretty poorly received games. <laughs> and that's it. Like a total waste of the franchise of Battlefront specifically. It's just stunning that they didn't do anything else with it. They could have literally just copy and pasted Battlefront 2 with modern graphics and you would have had a winning game on your hands, but they, they couldn't manage it. You know, with all this, I am just all the more excited to, to play this. Like I'm gonna get my brothers on this. We're all gonna play together and it's gonna be such a weird trippy throwback but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. These old like capture the flag missions. You remember these? Oh man, what a throwback. I don't remember the AI being this like super stupid. Maybe again, just rose tinted glasses are altering my, my memory, but I remember them being a little bit smarter than this. Now I'm the emperor. Boo, scary emperor noises. Subscribe to Nick Stevens. And I will drink a cup of cream. Sorry. Oh, God. I just killed my own man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, that's my bad. That's my bad. See how OP he is? Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. And I jumped off. I thought I had a double jump. I did not. Oops. <laughs> Oops. I got no one to blame but myself. Sorry, everybody. The Emperor is weird. He just leapt off the side of the, the Death Star. He fell to his death. It was odd. Blow up the sensor relay. Oh, I, I whiffed that. My bad. Hold on. We'll try again. Blow up the engine. Did we do it? Oh, well, maybe. Sort of. Did we get one of them? I can't tell. I'm not an experienced pilot. Oh, we're close, fam. We're close. Not really, though. I'm going to try my bombs again. There we go. We did it. Hooray. I remember these space battles being like the low point of the random queue when you'd play with your friends and stuff. And I, I'm kind of getting that vibe now. It's not like bad, but it's definitely the worst of the options. You know, like those, those modes, like the hero stuff that like that's the primo version of the game this angle is super disorienting though i don't know about you guys but this <laughs> gives me a migraine Mr. Kodjad, voila we blew it up and we got an achievement for it yay so all told i'm pretty impressed with this package i mean it's a simple that's going to be taken out of context isn't it i luke's impressed with this package sure am you heard me. But honestly, it is exactly what it's trying to be. And that is a re-release of two very beloved games. And they're done pretty well. They seem to run well. And they offer all like bonus content. So for a lot of people are going to find stuff in here they never got to experience when they played it all those years ago. And because it's being released on new systems, it also means that you're going to be able to play this with friends that you never got to experience it with before. Even if you might've played it separately when you were kids, now you can play it together as adults, which is kind of cool. Now there is one important thing I feel I should mention, which is that according to the information I have right now, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection will not feature cross-platform play, which means if you have a friend on an Xbox and you wanna play on your Switch and another friend wants to be on their PC, you cannot play together. However, it does theoretically have cross-generational cross-play, if that makes sense, meaning that you can play on a PS4 with players on the PS5 version of the game, or you can play on an Xbox One with players on a Series X. But other than that, there's not a lot of downside that I've been able to find on the PC version, testing it on handheld devices and on the PC I have here. 
It just seems to run well. There's added content, two new heroes in Star Wars Battlefront 2 to enjoy, and a new Jabba's Palace map for the original Star Wars Battlefront. There's just a lot here. And at the price point of 35 bucks, I think it's a great trip down memory lane that's priced probably pretty fairly for the amount of hours and enjoyment you're gonna get out of it. If you've never played these games and if you have no nostalgic attachment to them, it's probably not worth your time or, or money because they are 20 year old games and they feel like it and play like that. But if you played these when you were younger or a kid or whatever, it's gonna be a little trippy and weird to go and experience it all over again. I've been having a blast this weekend playing it and I'm gonna keep playing it when it comes out with my brothers and stuff and it's gonna be a good time. Not a game I'm gonna play for months and months, I'm sure, but a game that's gonna be fun for a week or so while we go back and enjoy a trip down memory lane. But let me know what you think. Are you gonna be trying out Star Wars Battlefront Classical Collection? Are you gonna be trying this? Uh, if so, awesome. If not, why not? Because it seems to me like a good time. I don't know, maybe by the time you're seeing this, it's gonna be revealed that like, oh no, the console versions are super broken or something. But from what I'm seeing, it seems to run pretty well and I'm pretty happy with it. The one big question mark is with regards to multiplayer stuff because I can't really test that right now. So I don't know how the servers will be or how that will work, but Assuming they get that done well and it performs properly, I think we're in for a treat. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. I love you all desperately. And I'll see you in the next video, okay? Hugs and kisses. Much love. Bye-bye.